Um, we have plenty of time. Um, so uh, does anybody have any questions? Or um, comments? Um, I, I, I don't have any questions. I just think they are beautiful. They're absolutely lovely. Thank you. Yeah, um, I agree, Emily. <laughs> Uh, Sonia asked, uh, how did you start embroidery? Um, I learned uh, embroidery uh, with my, my grandma a long time ago, but I stopped it. And then um, because I, I started working with storytelling and my group always work it uh, with uh, textile uh, props, so with that, I thought I, I, it would be nice to, to remember what my grandmas uh, taught me. So I took the, the experience of uh, what she taught me and to my work. <laughs> um, embroidery, I think, is something you can... It's very skillful, but you can start in a very basic way like it's easy to get into just sort of yes yeah i think there are some free techniques uh, i i there are a lot of uh, very strict uh, techniques of embroidery but some of them can be uh, you can and you can create your own technique uh, as well i i do my own <laughs> free dots like a um, in my way. Okay. Yes, I think it's interesting because there is the movement and um, how do you express yourself? Um, I think it can be very intense and very emotional as well. I was at a workshop with someone who, who uses embroidery for craftivism and she got us all to just draw a picture where you don't take the pen so as if you were embroidering, you can't take the pen off the page. And so you you can make your story or make your picture, but all with just one line. And it was a good kind of uh, way of, just a whole different way of drawing a picture. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, yes. I think there's something about the speed as well that makes it really accessible, Richard, because it's like drawing with a pen but without the expectations that you should create an amazingly big you know fantastic perfect picture in seconds because clearly you can only do it stitch by stitch so it it, it takes the pressure off people i think what do you think kadu yeah it's uh, yeah it's different because uh well when you take so many hours there just doing something happened <laughs> and and um, um sometimes i become very um, uh how can i say this in, in english um make me feel warm i know i don't know i think something that in my chest uh in my my breast yes that's it uh, mm. So Panda says in the flow. Yes, yeah. and sometimes just listening the um, the needle with the thread, just the, the 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 noisy, makes me feel. I don't know. It's something that makes me feel alive. Wow. And meditation, and as well, it's like a, mm. a, I feel that, that uh, I can be concentrate um at the same time that i'm uh aware what is going on and the images of the story comes mm. with um i started to do embroidery because i was doing photography and photography leads you down a road of technology and more and more things that you need to learn and buy and embroidery is just you don't need any of that with embroidery and that makes it quite freeing yeah that's it yeah mm. 
Uh, Ursula, uh, has, has anybody else in your group started embroidering as well? Yeah, oh, yeah. Uh, <laughs> some, some of the group, uh, they, they embroidery with me. Sometimes they do by their own, but they prefer to, uh, to use the sui machine. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Okay, yes. great. Yeah, because I, I was thinking about how interesting if and like um, all your effective roots in an in an on a big embroidered map. Mm -hmm. so, we have, yeah. for example, uh, we have big um, uh, objects or, or textile objects made mm. of uh, with the sewing machine. But to tell some stories from um, uh, a country or from somewhere, mm -hmm. it's not these kinds of uh, idea that I have, but we have big ones. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. But, but we, we, we do it together. What a pity they don't use your hand technique because there's something so nice about not using machine. Yeah, yeah. It's different. It's it's, yeah. it's very different. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I think some uh, some uh, some people become um, inspired when we when I saw uh, when I showed the, my my the project of the the embroidery. Some people then uh, it's interesting. They let me know. That ah, I'm doing this like uh, too. See, it's it's very simple my embroidery, but I I'm doing mm. uh, too. So some people and some of my group started uh, embroidering with their own hands without the sewing machine. Mm. But they prefer the the sewing machine anyway. Mm. <laughs> do you have any stories that you do where the characters in the story are stitching? Oh, not yet. Yeah. That's linked to a question I was thinking, Richard, because Cadu, last night in your storytelling, you, you, one of your characters, your main character, said, do you remember those whose blood and sweat made your city? That was Mar uh, um, Maria, I think. Maria uh -huh. Poeta. Um, and, and I was just wondering about whether you were telling your grandmother's story in any of your stories, which is what Richard has sort of suggested, you know, if your grandmother taught you to sew, to embroider, mm. then maybe yeah. her story and the story of other women like her who who've embroidered in her generations and before would be brilliant yes i think uh, richard is going to be uh for the, another story <laughs> yeah i know one i know a story where the character does all the stitching and yeah i'll i'll send it to you oh richard is a fabulous storyteller but he hasn't done it for a while also one of my favorites when i was doing some uh family tree research in the last in the last decade really uh, i came across the, the 1881 census where my grand great grandfather and family were registered and what they did uh, when they on the census they put down their trade they all they lived in the town of redditch in england and they were all working in the needle factories making uh, and their jobs were uh, needle ayer needle pointer um, fish mm. hook maker uh, and i decided to go and visit um, redditch to see the place and there is a needle museum because at the time in the 1880s redditch in england was the needle making center of the world and they made needles from very very small thin things right through to harpoons for use for whaling um, it was all to do with stretched wire and pointing and it was a it was a fantastically interesting industry of, of uh, and it made you think just how how important little pointy bits of metal are to the world we live in we you know ships with sails and yachts being stitched and so on all of that navigation and colonial exploration and so on and so forth wouldn't be possible without needles <laughs> <laughs> so i just kind of it's fascinating in a way that that whole sense of this tiny little thing in your hand is is a is an important thing and there's and so many people's lives if you think of stories were connected to that whole industry 
Yeah, yeah. and Panda's comment here about it, in Hackney, a disappeared mill was used for pointing needles. Makes a lovely <laughs> connection. Yeah. It makes a lovely oh. connection between your other industrial stories and, and, and this idea of stitching in story. Yeah, um, in, in the, uh, for in the people that works uh, as uh, tailors, the tailors, the um, the woman that uh, work with this, um, their stories are connected with these indu industries. Mm. Seamstress in English. Seamstress. Seamstress. Yeah, seamstress. the seam, as in what you. Yeah, okay. there you go, Sonia, speak me to it. The tailor yeah. and seamstress. Yeah. Mm. Also dressmaker, but that's a specific. Mm -hmm. Dressmaker. Somebody who makes dresses, but yeah. I, I will show uh, you my my sewing machine. is from my mother. I kidnapped my <laughs> sewing machine. <laughs> um, just for you to see here. Yeah, there is my my place to to make the swim yeah it's a nice pattern on it <laughs> are you There's able to show us close up one. yeah that's the case is it yeah yes and the machine is inside Oh, there lovely. You. Yes. <laughs> so a, a wooden surface. Yes, it's is it, a wood. Is it wood and metal? Yeah. Mm -hmm. No plastic. Yes. No plastic. I think it's uh, around uh, 60 years. Mm. 60 lovely. years old sewing machine. Yeah, mm. yeah. So does yes. anybody else have any other final questions for Kadu? That's lovely. I'm going to go away and find my embroidery needles, Kadu. <laughs> yes. But, um, okay. Yeah, Sonia said it's made me want to yeah. sew. It's made me want to do the same. So, um, yeah, thank you so much um, for your inspiration. Um, and for, for sharing that um, quite magical technique with us. Mm -hmm. I think it's the way it weaves together stories and pictures and emotions that makes it so powerful. Mm -hmm. It's connected to, to us, to our... Uh, there was a, a teacher, just to, to, to end, uh, that I, she taught me about embroidery and she's a very experienced woman She's a wise woman, and mm -hmm. she told me once that uh, when we catch um, with the, the, the needle, when we are doing the, the movement of embroidering, we are embroidering our heart, because it comes close to our heart and then to the, to the cloth. And with this, we are, with this movement, we are putting our heart there to the cloth in a movement. I love that. And I think this movement is a way to, to do the, the movement of the cartography of our emotions in a way. When we do this with a cloth, with a thread, like the, the thread of the destiny, mm. putting them in the cloth. Big stuff. <laughs> yeah. Mm. Uh, that's a lovely, I've written that down, Kadu. That's a lovely quote. Mm. Putting our hearts in the cloth with the movements of embroidery. Yeah. It's very concrete. It's very concrete, I think. Mm. Yeah. Yeah. And, um, and remembering what you said um, the the yesterday the panel with the the, uh, the talk with all the uh, the group of women mm -hmm. was very was a strong m moment of the, the last afternoon i 
really was like touch. And someone said that about uh, the bodies, you know, when we, when we um, stop watching things from, uh, from the, uh, the above, from the high places, um, we are now thinking about these geographies that are made by our bodies and different bodies make different geographies, mm. different perspectives of view and of life. And this, I think it's, it's, it's completely different. Mm. And, and these geographies can be more emotional. Yeah. I think that's a fantastic note to end on. I want to keep that one. <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I might embroider it on something. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Thank you so much, Caddy. Oh. Um, for everybody else's benefit, the, the next um, uh, event is um, the first Sunday to arrive with the Loiterers Resistance Movement. So unless you're sitting in a car on the edges of Manchester, which Emily might be, actually, um, then uh, I guess you're not probably joining. Most people won't be joining it in person, but you can join via Twitter and a number of other ways that... Um, are in the program and then we've got uh, a full program of things you can see on the event page through the rest of the day um through to the game over session at the end thank you all so much for your time and also just a, a cheeky reminder to donate if you haven't already we're desperately trying to scrape together some pennies um to cover this year's costs and hopefully to contribute to next year um as well um, and maybe flying you over from Brazil, Cadu, if we actually get enough money donated. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. have an in-person conference and everybody's oh, travelling. Wouldn't that be exciting? Yeah. yeah, um, yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah uh, vote, from, vote from the sun, sun you're there. Okay, um, I'm going to end this, um, this session. And thank you again, Cadu, and uh, look forward to seeing you next year and again soon. Take care. Yeah. Bye, Take everyone. Care. Thank you. Bye. Thank Bye. you so much.